I'm now joined by our NFL insider, Connor Hughes. And Connor, the Jets got their roster down to 53 yeah. men. Some surprises. Mm -hmm. Let's first start with Denzel Mim. Who is still on the roster? Yeah, Janae, I think the thing with, with Denzel that, that we need to talk about and, and what people need to understand is that Denzel doesn't hate the New York Jets. No. He doesn't hate Robert Sala. He doesn't hate Mike LaFleur. He doesn't hate Joe Douglas. Denzel Mims is frustrated, and he's frustrated by the fact that he is not starting and is not one of these one of this team's top three receivers. So his desire to be traded, why he and his agent asked for a trade, was because he wants to go to a place where he is going to start. So the the while well, he wants a trade and while the Jets are open to trading him it, it's not really as simple as what you do on Madden where you just kind of send him to somewhere oh, because you know? no exactly <laughs> yeah because a the Jets want equal value back so they're, they're not going to give him away for pennies on the yeah, dollar he was the second round pick exactly and and two it also has to do with the fact that if you're whatever team's acquiring Denzel they need to know that he wants to be on the field as a number one number two or number three receiver so I think what the Jets realize is especially after the Carolina Panthers struck a deal mm -hmm. for a receiver is just that the the option to trade Mims aren't really there both because of where he would go to play and also to the return value that he would get back. All right, let's talk about a receiver turned tight end that's on this yeah. team, Lawrence Cager. Yeah, How surprised are you? That's pretty cool, though. That, that's a that's a pretty big surprise because you know it, it was this is Rex Hogan's like brainchild. You know, this was yeah. one that, that he went to um, Ron Middleton, the Jets' tight ends coach, mm -hmm. and said, "Look, I got a player for you. I got something for you. I got something for you." And Ron Middleton's like, "What do you what do you mean?" And he goes, "Lawrence Cager, you're going to turn him into a tight end." And and <laughs> It was kind of thought of as this project player that maybe he impresses enough to land on, on the practice squad, and then he's on the practice squad and develops, and maybe he's a player in 23, 24, 25. But, Janae, the fact that, that he's not only making the 53-man roster, but might contribute on Sundays, yeah. I mean, it's a testament to, A, Middleton as, as a head coach, mm -hmm. B, Cager's ability to put on the weight, put on the right weight, and then C, the, the, the nuances of learning the tight end position. He's not just running routes. It's not just speed athleticism. He has to block wow. as well. So the fact that he made mm -hmm. this roster shows that the coaching staff have faith him they didn't want to subject him to the waiver wire and it's a pretty cool story one of the cooler stories here at Jets camp very cool story but I think for me probably the biggest surprise they mm. cut safety Jason Pinnock yeah that was that was a little bit of one because this was a guy that was running with the starting unit this yeah. was a guy who was uh, anytime LaMarcus Joyner came out he was the one that went in but I think what what ended up happening here is that the Jets believed he was a player that they could have subject to the waiver wire still get him back on the practice squad to keep him and develop him a little bit uh, but but it's also a testament to, to Tony Adams, the, yeah. the undrafted rookie mm -hmm. out of Illinois at the, out of Illinois that the Jets have. I mean, they think that he has very similar upside to Pinnock. But one thing that they like about him more than, than Pinnock is that they think that he has more special teams value. So he's the one who gets the nod on the 53. But if, if the Jets had a surprise mm -hmm. cut, that was certainly one of them, considering he was running with the first team defense throughout the offseason mm -hmm. program and a decent chunk of time here in training camp. Now, listen. Week one is still more than a week yeah. away. This 53-man roster isn't set. There's going to be some change between now and week one. Yeah, look, the Jets weren't the only team that trimmed their roster down to 53. 31 other teams did it. And, and when you talk about teams like the L.A. Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs and some of the better teams in the NFL, they're going to let go of guys that are very quality football players. So if the Jets look at this waiver wire and they see – offensive line help that they like if they see another tight end or another receiver or someone else that can help this defense or offense or special teams and they put a claim in on him and they are awarded that player via the waiver wire well now they got to cut someone so this is the unfortunate part of the business is you celebrate you know with, with making the initial 53-man roster but you're not totally in the clear for a couple more days until that waiver wire right. sheet comes through and then the, uh, the the supplemental moves that the Jets seem to make based off of who they claim comes through as well. So celebrate, but but hold your breath still for a couple more days. All I know is I'm celebrating that we are this much closer, closer Connor, closer. to week when we got a 53-man roster. Inch and closer. We got it. We got it. We got yeah. it. All right, for Connor Hughes, I'm Janae Coakley.